Hello, boys, girls, and envies, and welcome back to the judgiest place on the internet. My name is Josh. My name is Rick. And my name is Christian. And we are the, the judges. judges. And back with the specialist of guests, the biggest of deals. Yes, the one I'm most excited for. And of course, I went and wrote a little limerick, a little stanza, not George Cuz. Is there a difference between a limerick and a stanza? Yes. Probably. God, did you not pay attention in sixth grade English <laughs> class? <laughs> this is why it's not my episode to read. Here it is. <clears throat> when asked what guests we wanted this year, a pipe dream to be sure. Little Erica piped up, Ghost Honey would be awesome. She's a Tyler Gesa nerd. Then one fine day, an email came, a message churred round the world. A simple request, a guest request, a spot that turned Erica's head in a whirl. <laughs> now here we are, not near but far, a virtual date mayhaps. The judges having on our favorite host of Ghost Honey's Dream Machine podcast, it's Tyler Gesa. Yay! Wow. Welcome! Thank you for that beautiful, beautiful intro. You have a gift. Oh, thank you. It was... I hope it was sufficient. I would hate to embarrass myself in the first 15 seconds. <laughs> no, that was maybe the best introduction I've ever received ever. Or Amazing. Anything. Um, well, you're our best guest we've ever had on this episode. So <gasps> that is a fact. <laughs> to be fair, we say that to every guest. That is shh, chill, <laughs> chill. <laughs> uh, Want to go ahead and tell the listeners like who you are, what you're about? Sure. Um, my name's Tyler Gesa. I go by Ghost Honey on the internet. And I was just a humble art teacher in Columbus, Ohio, until I lost my job at the beginning of the pandemic. And I said, okay, I'll be funny on the internet. And two years later, here we are. Here we are. Yeah. All load all roads lead to the judges, is what I hear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you grow up in the Midwest in Ohio? No, I grew up kind of all over the place. A lot of people would say like, oh, are you a military kid? And it was like, no, my dad works for McDonald's. Oh. Um, so we moved a lot for him. That's so job, interesting. But, like corporate yeah. McDonald's? Uh, maybe. He's I'm Ronald. Sure. <laughs> He's Who can say? <laughs> <He's>... Not me. <laughs> That's awesome. Is it, all, um, is it all like continental US or like US stuff? Yeah. So I was okay. like born in Oklahoma, grew up on the East Coast in Virginia. Went to Ohio for school, got stuck there for seven years, and now I'm in LA. Wow. All right. Awesome. Well, hey, we love that for you. And like everything, all, all roads, you know, Ohio is for lovers, <laughs> but they say the internet is for judges. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> for sure. I think that's a phrase. I'm pretty sure I, Hawthorne Heights wrote that yep. and then scratched it because they're like, no, they won't exist for another 12 years. Mm. Do you think it's, it's only been this time? You think it's only been 12 years since that song came out? I don't know, man. It definitely You know not, that's right? 2010, right? <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, I don't like that information. That's way older than that. Okay, so like like you said, this is a podcast. Sometimes we do podcast things, and sometimes it's Erica's episode, a.k.a. me, a.k.a. Rick, a.k.a. not churred, Joshua. Mm -hmm. And I've got such a juicy story for you guys, and it's a long one, so bear with me. Did, did I do okay taking over? Amazing. For you? No okay. notes. Cool. Wonderful. Uh, I got a single note. No, you don't. Okay. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> Whatever, churd. <laughs> How dare you? So, this one was sent to us on Instagram. I can't remember her name now. I've been thinking about it all day so that I wouldn't forget her name, and now I've forgotten it. Rude. I'm the worst. However, it is a Reddit post. From r slash best of Redditor updates. Love it. A new favorite of ours. They do all the work for us. Okay. Confusing title, but I'll read it anyway. My 25 male friends, 25 female boyfriend, so my friend's boyfriend, yep. okay. 26 male, won't let me be a part of the relationship, even though it's not sexually or romantically, and we agreed on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that just means you're being a friend, right? Okay. Are we ready? I just, I do. What is a? How are you part of a relationship if it's not sexual or romantic? Oh, I'm right? about to tell you. Okay. <laughs> I just it's feel a, like those are the two major components to a relationship. It's sort of a threes company type thing. Okay. Where like, yeah, the landlord can't have them live in there. They you know what the, I mean? They need the straight man for this <laughs> whole dynamic to really work. Yeah. 
You can't have a car with four wheels. That would be absurd. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the original post was on r slash, r slash relationship underscore advice. Great. And here's the original post. I was really good friends with this girl. A. Do you want to, what do you, A name, Allison? You got it. All right. Was that the person who sent us the in, the Instagram message? Shit, There's maybe, but it's not chance. her. <laughs> I just looked real quick and the first name on the list was Allison. <laughs> What's well, the first A name I could think of? I don't know. What do you want to do? Audrey? Audrey's great. All right. I was really good friends with this girl, Audrey, and had a crush on her. She seemed to like me back until she got a new boyfriend. I was unhappy and said I couldn't be her friend anymore because of my feelings, and she admitted that her behavior towards me was misleading. She didn't want to stop being friends, so I suggested I be a part of the relationship. She eventually okay. said yes, and we came up with an agreement. Any comments for this first paragraph? Who solicited the relationship invite? The friend or, or Audrey? She didn't want to stop being friends, so I suggested okay. I be a part of the relationship. So Audrey is the okay. relationship maker. Yes. And then eventually Bethany said, okay, fine. No. Oh, I'm still misunderstanding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My 25 male, so the OP is 25 male. Okay. Oh, I thought Audrey was the OP. No, Audrey is not the OP. I'm lost. Okay, we need names here. OP's name. Tyler, you got an OP name for a 25-year-old male? Um, Kenny Chesney. Why was that the first name that popped in my head? <laughs> I like you looked over your shoulder to a room full of plants and said, Kenny Chesney. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Kenny is OP. Ooh. Is Kenny standing there? Blink if Kenny is in your house right now. <laughs> Straining to keep my eyes open. <laughs> All right. So OP is Kenny. The girl is Audrey. What's Audrey's boyfriend's name? Matt. Matt? Yeah. All right. Okay. Not where sex or romance was involved, but I would be invited to all dates that didn't happen at Audrey or Matt's house. Okay. I would be invited to Valentine's Days, but no kissing, but... Hugging or cuddling, etc., two times a week was fine. <laughs> we made up a list of things I would be involved with, and we went on our first date together last week. Audrey said she showed Matt the list, and he seemed fine with it. Okay. Edit. Okay. The list also includes some other cute stuff. It was 30 promises I made to her, but the others aren't relevant to this situation. A true romantic, honestly. 30 is a lot. Uh-huh. I thought it went well. I ordered a salmon steak and was talking to both of them equally about their f individual roles in the relationship and the future. I paid for our desserts and initiated a toast at the end with wine that I also paid for. I said if they wanted to go back to one of their houses, that was okay, and I knew I wasn't invited to that. Okay. But to let me know how it went so I'm not totally out of the loop. <laughs> what? <laughs> This is an insane dynamic going on, right? I told you guys uh, this was juicy. I'm still we're confused. just getting into it. I'm still confused how Kenny talked his way into this. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. <laughs> I I do need to be aware if there is a mutual orgasm or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I'm interested in as the third wheel. They did this, and that night Audrey texted me saying her uh, her boyfriend Matt isn't happy that I was there. She said he even wanted to break up or cancel any date that was not at one of their places. I was distraught and said I couldn't be friends with her and that Matt sounds like he's trying to split us up. She said she will talk to him, but doesn't think he'll budge. I said he seems controlling and she got mad. I don't know if I can go to the next date now, which is on Saturday. <laughs> That's a shoot. That's a real bummer. Damn, we were going to go to another nice steakhouse. What can I do to show him that I'm a good guy and an asset to the relationship? Should I just find out where they're going and show up? No. How is that your solution? Bro. That might be the worst thing you could do. Yes. All right. So then uh, there's an edit. Says. I, can I say, it's nice that Kenny is like actually trying to impress Matt, it seems. Right. Yeah. Like, it's nice that he is respecting relatively the bounds of the relationship that was set without him, right? 
Yes. Like at He's least coming in so fast and hot and strong though. Yes. yes. <laughs> he is absolutely. He's teetering on the line, but at least he is like, I need to impress Matt. It's, I need to get in my twice a week cuddles, my bi weekly cuddles. It's weird that he keeps saying this is only a friendship, but also is like, I we do need a cuddle and we do need to uh go on dates together. And it's like <laughs> I th- if you're a friend, I think it's just hanging out. I think just, <laughs> you yeah. know, you don't cuddle with your friend. Sometimes. I mean yeah, I guess, but but no more than two a week because then <laughs> your past friendship. Right. Sure, it's not like contra- contractually obligated. In, yeah. <laughs> in this case, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's my dog. That's all right. That's She's all right. really upset when she found out about this throuple. <laughs> <laughs> hey, please, <laughs> they're gonna work it out. <laughs> Here. What's your dog's name? Penny. Maybe Penny. that's how I got Kenny Chesney because I, I looked at her and then Penny Kenny. Oh man, yeah. Makes like, sense. I don't like the sounds of this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think this guy is a dog whistle. I think that's what he's doing. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the edit says people think I want to make Matt Polly. I don't, and I won't hit on it, Audrey. I just want to be there for the relationship, as I am just as important as Matt, mm. just in different ways. I even said at the restaurant that me and him are like two pillars holding up a monument, which would be Audrey. Oh, well. Mm. Which I thought was clever and would help him to see this was a good idea. No, I don't think I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) I think you're misunderstanding what Matt feels about the situation. I just kind of think if the 30 promises didn't work on him, you saying that you're the second pillar isn't going to help either. All right. So here's some comments that Kenny makes from... This is like what he posted in the comment section. Okay. I see your point that I'm not taking their feelings into account much yet, but that's because they haven't given it a fair chance. So they can't have true feelings this early on. Mm. Matt doesn't know me personally, so he views me as lesser than him and an annoyance, thinking he is all that Audrey needs. But we are both equally important, and he needs to understand that. We are two pillars holding up Audrey. Without really? either of us, she would crumble down. Well, that's uh, that's <laughs> bad. At first, it was like it felt like you needed her, and now you're saying that she needs you, and it's gotten weird. You mm-hmm. somehow flipped the script. When she we... is a fragile, fragile woman, and she cannot stand for herself. It's the year mm. 2022. Women haven't figured that out yet. Mm-hmm. When we sit down to eat on Saturday, after they've had a cinema date without me, which I'm not happy about, but I'll let that slide. (laughs) They saw Doctor Strange, (laughs) Multiverse of Madness, and I'm kind of upset, okay? We could have our own multiverse. Our relationship's like a multiverse. We're going in and out of each other's lives. (laughs) I will talk to each of them about what they'd like all of our roles to be and ask them to be completely honest. I will take into account that Matt, what Matt says and take on board criticism as long as he is willing to listen to me and can try to meet me halfway. I'm not trying to claim her, but without a pillar, a monument crumbles. He's so into this he, analogy. Yeah, he's uh-huh. really stuck on the imagery there. <laughs> a little too into it. <laughs> and then oh. his next comment says, okay, I at least want Matt to give it a chance before saying I can't go on most of the dates. He at least owes me that as Audrey's best friend and the other pillar who holds her up with him. (laughs) (laughs) We are equally important as without both of us, she would crumble. I'll talk with him at the meal on Saturday and we can come to a compromise. Maybe I could arrange the date and treat them both once a month. I am her best friend, so there's no other guy to join our dates. But I have a guy friend who I would let come if he wanted to. You're trying to expand... Audrey needs three pillars. Hear me <laughs> out. The thing is, the structural integrity of two pillars could be compromised unless you have one pillar horizontally at the bottom. Mm-hmm. You got to have uh-huh. the, the third pillar is important. Right. And Nature's just simple architecture. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Nature's most most stable structure is a three-footed base. Are you ready for one of his rudest comments? Okay. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> If I followed the advice of crack addicts, I would never be in a relationship. Yet, I've never had a shortage of opportunities because I trust myself more than basement dwellers. Where did the crack addict come from? (laughs) Who knows? This dude sucks. Crack addict and basement. I feel like, okay. So, just implying that he knows what's best. 
uh-huh. that he doesn't need advice. I came to relationship advice for confirmation, not advice. Correct. Yes. I wanted to. Sounds advi- like the community was n- not yeah. for his pillar analogy. <laughs> yes. It's also okay. weird for him to say, "I can, I can get a relationship just fine. I don't need this. <laughs> I just think Audrey needs this. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it without for her. me. She would crumble. Yeah." It appears they both don't want me to be a big part of the relationship, which hurts after we already decided on it. I went at the time I assumed the meal would be only to not see them there or be able to get in as I didn't have a reservation. I waited outside for a while and they never showed or replied to my texts or calls. I went home and messaged them both about how I felt the relationship was very one-sided and we needed everyone to be happy. I sent a photo of the list of my involvement saying I could compromise. Matt just straight up told me (laughs) he didn't want me in their relationship and said neither did uh, Audrey. She just didn't want to tell me. I argued that it's not only their decision since we already agreed on it. (laughs) (laughs) Who gives you the right? (laughs) You signed a binding contract. And it was already keeping my weekends free for them. That's sad. But as I wasn't going to be asked on dates, I just wanted Audrey to hang out with me on the day she wasn't with him. So I messaged Audrey saying, since she hung out with him today, why doesn't she come to my place for dinner tomorrow? Mm -mm. She said she needed to study. I said, why didn't she study today instead of hanging out with Matt? And that I feel the relationship is very (laughs) one-sided. She said, well, I'm her friend. She doesn't see me as part of their relationship, which hurt a lot because I thought I was doing my best. I offered to go to hers and cook for her and help her with studying. She still said no to that, that uh, saying she needs to concentrate. Uh, I haven't pushed it further, but I'm two minds. I'm in two minds whether to just go because I do need to talk to her about this. (laughs) Yikes. Oh, my God. I'm worried she might be depressed or that Matt might be controlling her as she won't even hang out with me as a friend anymore since she's been with him. Uh, She's literally telling you, I don't want to be around you. That's not Matt. I've written a really long letter to her explaining everything. So maybe I should just so maybe I should post that through her door Instead of going in person, in case she doesn't answer or Matt is there, this guy's giving real. Mark. I feel like, oh, go I feel like the letter is made from like cut out letters from magazines. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm getting that vibe. Absolutely, this is that very vibe. Much turning into a horror movie. Yeah, tied, tied tight with the lock of Audrey's hair that she didn't know she was <laughs> missing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the best comment to the update says when uh this is so creepy what i'm hearing is you want to be in a poly relationship and they don't you sound very creepy and sad no one wants to hang around with somebody desperate to have a threesome with them but you just said in another reply to me you weren't going to be on a date with them so which is it it's it's almost like this person wants like a poly like almost like a cuckold relationship too right where he is just saying like i don't even need to be involved just tell me what happens right yeah, I guess. Because he's he was down with the non sexual, non uh romantic aspect of it. I don't think he knows what he wants. Cause he keeps saying he <laughs> Well keeps he wants like, Audrey. Yeah. <laughs> but he keeps like bouncing back bef- between using like the term friends yeah. to being in a relationship. It's like I don't think you know where you land in this whole ordeal. All yeah. right. So he responds and says, When I got to the restaurant they weren't there unless they were hiding in the back somewhere. I don't know if creepy (laughs) is the word, but uh, it has upset and made me feel unsettled. He thinks they're being creepy from hiding from him. (laughs) Uh huh. (laughs) They're being real weirdos about this. I don't know, guys. Um. Then he says, "I'm her best friend and support only. I'm straight. They want to have a date to have sex. They can, and I won't be at their houses for dates that involve sex." Okay. Uh, then he says, in the list, we came up with one rule was I would be present for all dates that were in public settings and not at their houses. I went to one at a restaurant looking at my best, looking my best and acting my best. And now apparently the rules, that rule's gone down the drain for no reason. So I'm unsure what to do. I love the implication that he's gone to other dates not acting his best. <laughs> Like now, sometimes I act like sixty percent my best. I'm just kind of a shit shitter. Um, then somebody said that uh, Audrey and Matt need to get a restraining order, mm-hmm. 
And then he replied with, that's not a good thing to do to your childhood friend. I've been there for her through thick and thin. I'm going to be walking her down the aisle one day. No, you're not. She needs to think about how comfortable I will be doing that, knowing what Matt is like now. I'm as important. I'm just as important, but in a different way. I just need her to see that. But I think going to her house tomorrow might be a bad idea. Um, this okay. is going to sound a little out of left field, but I think it's a bad idea. <laughs> Then mm-hmm. he then he says, she told me she wanted me to be her best man and walk her down the aisle if her dad wasn't around by the time she got married. In return, she was going to be my best man at my wedding and um, possibly do the same. I don't think Matt is creepy. I just don't like how he's treated me. I've posted the letter this morning, so now it's a waiting game. Oh, what? this is OK. Let's gather. There's our a lot going on here. I'm so frightened for their safety. Right? Yes. Um, <laughs> it seems he's a little unwell. I yeah. I hope we get an update eventually in this line of updates from Audrey or like Audrey's side. I hope it's not all serial killer sides updates. It's all serial killer sides. That's wanna, not ideal. I want to know how mm. old Audrey's dad is to where he's like, I'm going to be walking her down the aisle. <laughs> well, Unless he's alive, which he probably won't be, if you know what I'm, I'm saying. i him too. Right? <laughs> Um, uh, I'm trying to be at her side and her, and Matt is at her other side. Together we're the pillars Stop. holding her up. <laughs> Get the pillars out of here, man. <laughs> I'm going to respect her boundaries though, since people have brought them up. I'd like for Matt to do the same, but doubt he will. And she will be fine with that. But I'll back off and not go visit her at all unless she says it's okay. And I'll say she only has to read the letter when she feels like hearing me out. So there's no pressure. So he's given he's giving the vibes of like because he's he mentioned multiple times early on and still going of like all I need to do is be friends and then eventually we'll fall in love. That's how it works is mm-hmm. you develop feelings, not that, you know, people can have connections or not have connections. He's totally bought into the idea of like, just get me in the same oral sphere as her with an AU, not not. Oh, that's my Midwest. Sure. Our oral spear, sphere sphere. <laughs> uh <laughs> And I can change her mind. So somebody asks in the comments, are you trying to be the third pillar in a two people relationship? (laughs) That's weird. He goes, no, I'm the second pillar. (laughs) The best friend. Her boyfriend is the other pillar. And she is the monument we're holding up, supporting. I write poetry, so I'm very good at metaphors. And I like to drop (laughs) them into conversation once in a while. I would have never guessed that. As as someone who's somewhat of a poet myself, <laughs> I would maybe let this person know, uh, you know, a la the bean in Chicago, some sculptures don't need supports. There you go. Sometimes mm. they just like to have them around a la uh, the skating rink next to the bean. That's Matt. <laughs> and you 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 are where we live. Nowhere near, no, nowhere near Chicago. Uh-huh. Get the heck out of the relationship. Yeah. I just... The whole pillar analogy just like really like I was every time I read another sentence with the word pillar and I was like, God damn it. (laughs) What is this guy doing? He's really stuck on that imagery. He really is. If you're that good of a poet and that good at (laughs) metaphors, don't you think there's another analogy you could come up with? or more material than that. Exactly. The thing is, Tommy Two Tones doesn't. He didn't write a second song. He hit it with 8675309. He's like, that's it. That's his <laughs> pillar. That's all you got to do. Okay. I believe you. Mm. <laughs> One night while he was cutting up magazines, <laughs> making a letter for Audrey, he flipped the page of National Geographic and saw these pillars and was like, <gasps> oh this God. is it. <laughs> that's <laughs> This mad. is my one hit wonder. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's the story. Oh, insane. I want an update yeah, so bad. We need and I never would have thought I would have asked for more updates. I know. It does it did have the tag in conclusive, but I had to read it anyway because it was wild from start to finish. When was the last post from, like date wise? Um the this post on Best of Redditor updates yeah. was ninety three days ago. Oh okay. Uh oh. Okay. Do we need to file like a missing persons <laughs> report or something? <laughs> mm. I can't tell like where they're at in the world either because there was some well, they said cinema. That's the only like dialectical mm-hmm. difference that I noticed. Yeah. Wow. But that could just be a pretentious a poet. poet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so 
So did yeah. Did he say at the beginning that they were childhood friends? No, he didn't. He didn't until like the very in, end in when he middle. was replying to some comments. They right. at the beginning it sounded like they had just met. That's what I thought too. Like, I I thought I the hate same to call thing. him a liar, but Mm. <laughs> it seems like a lie. <laughs> well, the thing about pillars is they don't lie, they stand. So he can't be Boo. a liar. He's a standard. What a bystander gosh. to this relationship. <laughs> that, yeah, that's that's accurate. And you know what? Bystander. Uh, I he's probably thinking they're childhood friends because Audrey's just so childish without him around to really <laughs> support her. Or maybe mm. he just really feels like he's known her, her his whole life. They're just that. I her her I life can... didn't be begin until she met me. Ugh. Until I came into her life. I bet he's the type mm. of dude that, that thinks that. I kind of feel that way about Kenny Chesney in general. <laughs> so, I mean, if that... <laughs> I was struggling to remember the name we ascribed him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's the story. That's what? it. That's the tweet. A lot of thoughts about it. I know. I yeah, yeah, I'm very worried. I feel like part like things must have not ended well because no. otherwise he would have gave updated. Kind of, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe his silence is like they just kind of abandoned him and he's like too ashamed or embarrassed to he's going through it. Let the community know they were right. <laughs> Let's hope that is yeah. the case. Yeah. I feel like that's yeah. best case scenario. He's still going through <laughs> magazines trying to find the perfect letters to write his apology to her. Worst case scenario, they're both dead and buried. But Ooh. well, <laughs> Ooh. let's hope not. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. let's aye, hope aye, that's aye. not the update we get. I, I, what a story! You didn't, you didn't disappoint. Okay, Can I, say I that? didn't. I didn't overhype it. No, good. That that story had so many ways where it's like, oh, this is where it's going. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's becoming a little self aware, and then he's just like, no, no. <laughs> Yeah. Pillars again. Yes. <laughs> it's like the word pillar was a reset button on his like conscience. He's like, no, I need to relearn everything in the world. I'm a little baby. I don't know what's right or wrong. Uh, yeah. I don't understand boundaries. Yeah. Josh, would you consider yourself the, the second pillar in me and Erica's relationship? I would consider me the first one. And Erica's the second one holding up little baby Christian. Yes. Christian would I, crumble I, without me. I would agree with that. I would crumble. <laughs> First and all, without Erica. I would crumb. Hold on. Both of you would crumble without me. How, oh, no. How's that? Are, are we all codependent here? I I'm think... just one giant pillar <laughs> with two arms holding the both of you up. I think we're You're welcome. three logs lashed together, and Tyler is the rope holding us up there. Okay. Oh, wow. And without you, we'd be nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No pressure to you, but... <laughs> Does no, that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it was it was getting a little like Final Destination there for a little bit, like a log <laughs> uh, analogy. But no, no, that's that's really nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Break short. What do you think, Richard? Uh, we're like thirty-ish minutes in, so I'm Ooh. down for a break. Let's go on the other side of this break. Bye. Bye. And welcome back to this side of the podcast. No updates on that post. We waited nope. 24 more days and still nothing. We we waited however many laundry cycles we needed to be to where we all happened to wear the same exact clothes again yeah. to make it not weird. Mm -hmm. Still no update. Mm -hmm. Audrey's still missing. Audrey, yeah. if you're out there. If you're <laughs> Audrey, if you're a piss baby, if you listen to us or Ghost Honey, please <laughs> let us know. I hope you're okay. We do hope you're okay. Yes. I we oh, the 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 twist of the century. She dumped Matt and she now she's with Kenny. No. And it's a healthy relationship. It's that's the caveat is it was actually a healthy relationship. Oh no. Or Matt dumped Audrey for oh, Kenny. Yes. Because there that. was sexual tension yes. the entire time. Love they realized I, they weren't competing for her. They were I was picking up on that other. the entire story. That's really the twist of the century for sure. The, Audrey crumbled. Matt didn't know where to turn. And where else to turn but the other pillar? Kenny. He was there the whole time. <laughs> when you look behind you, you only see one pair of footprints. It's because Kenny was carrying you. When one pillar left, 
and Audrey crumbled, it knocked the other pillar into. Oh my god! Into it, and then they were like, "Oh my god, is this? <laughs> is, is this, this so sturdy? <laughs> is, this a, is this starting something? We're so know. alike." <laughs> How do you feel about cutting out letters out of magazines? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I always admired your your poetry spelled incorrectly. You put an extra T in there for some reason. And speaking of extra T, here mm. we are. We're going to the circle, George. Normally we dredge around the circle, but really it's just an excuse for us to break the cycle. And Christian has some nice little things for us to look into. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can stop me, Tyler. How, how do you feel about conspiracy theories? Ooh. Where do you um, stand on those? Love to hear them. <laughs> love to uh, What's not going believe on? in a lot of them, but love to tickle my imagination with the endless possibilities I'm that just are out there. Curious what's going on with the cork board behind you and all the red twine. <laughs> just off screen. You can see that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I brought us a couple low stake conspiracies off of Reddit. These basically are, you know, let's all the creepy weirdos that absolutely love conspiracy theories like myself really put that energy in something that's not quite as destructive as real conspiracy theories yeah okay. we're not worried mm. if the moon landing was fake we're worried if the cheese that we have in our fridge is actually from a goat or not yeah i mean that's pretty close to what these are about and hey you spent a couple years in ohio i'm sure you've had mm -hmm. these the first one is Inflation is making there be more pretzels in Gardetto bags. For anyone that doesn't know what Gardetto's is, it's kind of like like a trail mix type. Trail mix. It's like pretzels, ride chips. The ride chips are ride the chip best. Is. And they've got mm -hmm. those little tiny breadsticks. <laughs> Which and are not the best. Those are actually the worst in the bag. No, the pretzels are the worst in the bag. The breadsticks are mid. Ride chips mm -hmm. top tier. Okay. And they're so good. So right. we think inflation, which is that a record high, of course, last year, 8%, yeah. is directly affecting the pretzel game. It's increasing the pretzel game. I, I'm assuming pretzels are the most cost-effective mm. uh, filler item in the bag. We all know we're really there for the ride chips. Correct. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we all know that, right? We're all here for the ride chips. Josh, can you agree? Tyler? Can I, can I, I agree. Conte can I contest? You need... Sun, uh, cloudy days a la pretzels to appreciate the sunny days. That's what the bread a la rye, okay. a la rye chips. You know, if it was a bag of all rye chips, I'm probably not munching on it as fervently as I am. They sell bags of all rye chips, and I've never bought one. Oh, I have. That's oh, what I prefer. I go actually. feral for them. Oh, <laughs> literally, they're so good. <laughs> I guess I'm in the minority. Don't we have like a third degree of separation from the Gardetto family? Yeah. So hopefully, we really get in there with this story, this conspiracy. <laughs> The judges go investigative beat reporters. We need to hit up our one person that knows someone that knows someone that knows the Gardetto. I don't even the think it's that. The heiress of the Gardetto's family. Yes. <laughs> the princess, even. <laughs> she has called herself that several times, I believe. <laughs> Meghan Markle? You guys know <laughs> <laughs> Meghan Markle? I guess she's not princess anymore. Next one. When you order food from restaurants via apps, they give you less food. Which is well, that's just true. That's a hundred percent true. We do feel this way about Chipotle. Chipotle specifically, mm. they really mm -hmm. you. If you go through the drive-through there or like order online, you walk away and you're like the Chipotle. Oh yeah, the Boo. Chipotle. You, that's the name of it. <laughs> I'm still booing. Are it. you booing Chipotle <laughs> corporate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you walk away from there and it's like half, we get burrito bowls and it's like half filled. And you're like, what is going on here? And then you mm -hmm. go in person, they're just slopping it on there. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's because it's not easy to get into those bowls. They know you're not going to look until you get home. That's true. That's true. How they get away with it. <laughs> and they don't have to see the disappointment on your face if they're not making it in front of you. That's, <laughs> I just a few weeks ago, we went to Chipotle mm -hmm. and. I was getting Erica's food for her, and she gets a barbacoa, and I use a little tongs to get it. Okay. And this person, they, they picked it up four times and tried to shake some off because it was too big of a serving. And on the final one, they literally gave me, like, a pinch of meat, and they put it on there, and they said, do you want double meat? And I <laughs> I am about broke down. I thought I was about to turn into Kenny and start leaving, like, <laughs> ominous letters on the door. I was also pretty upset about it when he brought it home. I was like, well, there's Aww. no meat on this. So this is why I've adopted the strategy of going through, and tell me if I'm off base here, 
I go through the Chipotle lane. I park. <laughs> Just because it's a thing doesn't mean you have to say it, Joshua. <laughs> it hurts a little bit when you say it. I go through the lane of Chipotle and get my meal. I park. If there's not enough, I go in there and rub the worker's nose in it and say, look what you did to me. Oh. Am I off base? Yeah. That's okay. gross. I didn't like it. <laughs> then I won't do it then. Oh. Anymore. <laughs> Easy home remedies for common issues found online on online blogs are written by Big Baking Soda. Okay? Baking soda is in a lot of home remedies. It's used in anything. If you mm. Google how to clean up any stain, at some point there's like, yeah, just put a tablespoon of baking soda on it. Mm-hmm, with and some it works. The pro- what makes me mad soap. is it works every time. It does, yeah. Yeah, well then is it even a conspiracy theory or is it just good marketing? <laughs> okay. I feel like the guy who invented the respiratory system, it was he was influenced by big air. I feel like big oxygen really had a hand in it. He's like, oh, whenever you breathe, you need 23% oxygen. Bullshit. 21%. Tw- hey, I'm trying to get a little bit of lightheadedness over here. <laughs> <laughs> there the would ro- be more, but inflation. Oh, I didn't even take that into account. Yeah. 8% over the last year. Huh. Yeah. Didn't even increase with the normal, the typical raise amount. Didn't even... Didn't even correlate with the inflation moving on yeah man next (laughs) the rise in gmo peas is directly correlated with big toothpaste okay gmo peas Peas. as in peas the vegetable yes oh okay this is because toothpaste have said for a long time to use a pea-sized amount with the toothpaste but with the increasing size of peas nowadays people are now using more toothpaste than than is required meaning more money is going to big toothpaste. Interesting. That one's fucking stupid. This one makes the most sense. Incorrect. This one makes the least amount of sense. That seems like too much work. Maybe I'm just lazy, but... <laughs> yeah, you're not... That just feels like too much work. Yeah. Do you not keep a can of peas in your bathroom next to your... Uh, I keep my toothbrush in the can of peas. Ew, so that way sure. I can take it out and measure and make sure I'm not using too Make much sure it's toothpaste. precise. Yeah. No, I squirt as much as my toothbrush can hold. I did and that. I always have. I have done that until problem. like the last year. Is that why your dentist had to like show you how to brush your teeth <laughs> so intimately? Oh my yes. god, I forgot. Probably. How... <laughs> the it's one energy. Of my favorite ones. Those the energy the coming off that dentist. The pillars in my mouth, my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> you heard of them? The same. <laughs> Do you have more, or can I tell you the conspiracy I heard the other day? I got one more here. Okay. <clears throat> and this one I also believe is 100% true. This one has... This one's not made up at all. I feel like you guys kind of... <laughs> you kind of discredited me on the last couple, yeah. saying like, oh, these probably aren't that true. Yeah. They course. all were true. All right. You guys just don't... You just can't think in the minds of mm-hmm. the elite shadow puppeteers are running the world but it's fine (laughs) but olive garden is limiting its unlimited soups by making it hotter so people have to order it slower yo i've got my own conspiracy theories about (laughs) fucking unlimited soups but when's the last time tyler you got unlimited soup from olive garden I can't even remember the last time I've been to an Olive Garden. Okay, well, That's round. Fair. I'm happy for you. <laughs> That's yeah. That means you've taken positive <laughs> steps in your life. Round here, Olive Garden is sort of like the fanciest place. Yeah. When you dress up and you put on a collar, mm-hmm. that's where you go. Mm-hmm. And the last time I was there, most recently, the poop the poop was siping hot. The soup was piping hot. <laughs> and I can say honestly, it didn't used to be that way. It was always cold as shit. Yeah. My issue is that the waiters don't come around often enough to replenish my soups. Mm. I want four soups before my oh, meal comes. It's too many soups. No, it's not. Because <laughs> the, the whole thing is you get unlimited soup with your meal. So you eat as much soup as you want you to be full. Up, yeah, you fill up And then on you your take rate. that meal home and then you've got two meals for the price of the one. I do. It's have- God given American right. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Tyler. <laughs> I do have one big issue with how you do it because I I, I agree a hundred percent. You get as much soup as you can and then you take you take the entree home. But you don't even touch the entree, you just go, Can I have a box? 
and then you put an untouched entree in the box, and now it feels it feels fishy. Like they're on. Well, here. now Big Olive Garden is at my door, and my dog is upset, and they're coming for me. I hope you're happy. <laughs> get him, Penny. Get him. Please. So, we heard you haven't been to an Olive Garden in a while. <laughs> Striking a, a baton made out of breadsticks on their hands. Stick crumbling. <laughs> uh, but this conspiracy theorist felt like every time he went there, he was getting hotter and hotter soup when he'd go to Olive Garden. I agree. So one time he brought a thermometer with him and he checked the temperatures as the soups were coming out and they were progressively getting hotter and hotter. And he believes if you keep ordering long enough, it'll get so hot, it gets to the point where you can't even eat it anymore. Interesting. And I think that's probably true. I don't and then believe it becomes that. a lawsuit. Yeah, that Tyler, and you'll have to soup's too hot. You'll have to consult your dad about this, but this does seem like a McDonald's coffee escapade here waiting mm-hmm. to happen. I, right. Hey, don't bring that up. <laughs> and I would love Sore to know the in increments in temperatures. Yeah. <laughs> we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. That's we why we moved to head of coffee. Scandal. His dad was head of coffee. <laughs> don't you fucking bring that up. Head of McCafe, actually. <laughs> was his idea he was the one in the room that was like hotter it needs to be hotter (laughs) (laughs) well that's all i got for conspiracy theories i hope you guys Uh, enjoyed them i did what's what's yours erica so now can i say i'm scared because you work public health and when you say i heard a conspiracy theory the other day i feel like it's gonna be insane no it's about sharks good (laughs) i enjoy that more than a public health conspiracy about whatever the next sharks actually live every week of the year there's not just one week (laughs) Of all, sharks. All sharks are spawned. Discovery Channel goes out with their scuba divers, and then they all disappear for 360, 58 days. Okay, anyway. So, there was a TikTok that I watched the other day, mm-hmm. and this dude's like, there's something going on with this shark tracker, so that you know that they capture and tag sharks to like monitor their migration throughout the year, whatever. For Discovery Shark Week, yes. I don't think it's this. Oh, anyway. Probably is. It's all tied together. Anyways. Big discoveries behind all of this. <laughs> Big discovery. <laughs> Anyways. One shark. So all the sharks tend to stay like along the coastline, right? Okay. One shark disappears for a bit and then reappears way out in the middle of the Atlantic, like where the sharks are not supposed to be, right? Okay. Traveling up and down the middle of the Atlantic. Okay, in the real, real deep, (gasps) deep waters. Atlantic, you say. Atlantic Ocean. I see where this is going. No, you don't. Yes, I do. (laughs) (laughs) So the conspiracy theory is that this one shark got eaten by a megalodon. Oh, that's not where I thought it was going. I told you. I told you you didn't know where it was going. I thought it was going to be a gastiodon. Idiot. What the fuck is that? I don't know. I made it up. (sighs) Anyway, so that this shark dude got eaten by a big dude. And was up and down the middle of the ocean. That's the conspiracy. That's pretty cool. Yeah. There's always a bigger fish, as per Qui-Gon Jinn. Is that in the first Star Wars movie? Yeah. Huh. I could not have told you that that person was in Star Wars. Qui-Gon Jinn? Yeah. Played by the guy. I can't remember his name. Taken, the actor, Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson is in Star Wars? Oh, my Lord. Yeah, he's a real menace. Oh, hey, good one, man. It was spoilers, he mm. dies and now he's a phantom. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess I can never watch that sh- movie again. Uh, uh, spoiler alert. Right? Spoiler. Um, <laughs> can I share one of my conspiracy theories that would I we, just came up with? Would yes, love please. it. Yes. I feel like big baking soda is behind the pretzel increase because don't you need a baking soda bath sure to do. make pretzels? Because And that would make them more expensive to make. But not if you're big baking soda. <laughs> not yeah, not for big baking soda. There you yeah. go. That is a, the that's what makes a pretzel a pretzel, not just bread. For, <laughs> forgive my ignorance. Uh, the person making it needs to take a baking soda bath. That way, they're like clear headed to go make the pretzels, or An the pretzels take the clean. bath. Yeah, which the workers is? do, but then the pretzels <laughs> themselves also have to boil to make. To make the pretzel, you have to be the pretzel. So do you do you think that they bathe together? Like that's what the the extra like salty flavor is. That's where the pretzel rods. Yeah, came because in. skin on skin contact is so important. It's for very a good important. Pretzel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's especially in those first few that's, hours. You have to pay yes. extra actually to do skin on skin. Yeah. 
<laughs> Auntie Anne's. That's how they do it. That's why their pretzels are so good. Mm-hmm. All right, boys. I like that. You ready for a it's little... all the whole world is big baking soda. We told he has the board <laughs> behind him. <laughs> you ready for a listener submitted? Yes. If you guys are not aware, we take listener submitted sounds to preface our listener submitted stories. You can send in both or either at judgespod at gmail.com or through our Instagram DMs. This is a listener submitted sound, and I hope it's good. And don't embarrass us in front of Ghost Honey. No, please do. <laughs> Stop shitting on the Honda Civics, for the love of God. When did we shit on Honda Civics? I shit on Honda <laughs> Civics. <laughs> and I got a lot of hate for it. All right. They said, hey, oh. it's an economy car. There's nothing wrong with an economy class car. Well, the reason sure. I, was, I was getting hate because we were making fun of, we were saying this kid was rich, and I was like, yeah, and he's driving a Honda Civic, and everybody was yelling at me like, a Honda Civic is a good, affordable car. Okay, can between the three of us, can we all agree that we all thought physically taking a dump on a Honda Civic? Yeah, okay. absolutely. That's I what, was like, who's pooping on cars? <laughs> that's where my head was. I was like, when did we do a BM on a... Well, I'm <laughs> sorry. I did not sh- I did not physically <laughs> that's shit why, That's why you're so Civic. taken aback by your confession. It, it's <laughs> too I was so silent for a little bit. I was just trying to piece together the puzzle. <laughs> that's the biggest conspiracy is Christian only dookies on, on 97 Honda Civics. All right. So, They're affordable and reliable. All right. That's all I got to say. The other day... I don't know. Was it yesterday's episode when we talked about family drama? Um, it, it was this week's. Hey, by the time this comes episode out. Episode 102. Okay. So in episode yep. 102, we talked about family drama and I said, send us your juicy family gossip. Okay. Got well, it. RJ on Instagram sent me some juicy family gossip. Love that for them. Are we fine with having their name? In? They told me to use okay. their name. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Oh, it, she says literally in here episode 102 i could have just fucking read it my bad guys embarrassing so my grandmother on my mom's side grew up lutheran but was the kindest woman you'd ever met i don't know what that has to do that doesn't come back (laughs) up later well are lutherans are they notoriously unkind i don't know uh kenny was a lutheran he kind (laughs) of the way he nailed the 30 promises and then the ultimatum on audrey's door very Martin Luther, it's given off, okay? Oh, <laughs> amazing. Amazing, Christian. I love that. Ooh. Uh, always very warm and patient. She was an ER nurse for over 40 years, but she passed in October of 2020. Very sorry for your loss. She went to nursing school right out of high school in a different state than her home state. Then she married my grandfather after graduation, and after their marriage, had my uncle and then my mom. Um, in about 2017, 2018, my mom gets a random Facebook message from a man claiming to be her half brother on her mom's side. Okay. My mom and I talked about it at the time and there was no way in our minds this God fearing woman would have a child out of wedlock and not keep it or tell anyone. But a few weeks later and a DNA test and messages later, it's true. This man who we've never met, who lives two States away is it's, my mom's and my uncle's half brother? Is one hundred percent that bitch? Mm. Wow! Old joke. Oh. We're over that joke. Hey, this will be not. weeks ago, and it'll be funny again. <laughs> <laughs> he has my grandma's striking blue eyes and smile. We should have caught on sooner, but alas, here we are. My mom tried to talk to my grandmother about it several times, but the most she would ever talk about it is that she admitted it was true once and never spoke of it again. Hmm. He wrote oh, such a grandma move. Right? Absolute grandma move. This oh, is this the plot of Game of Thrones IRL? This is Ned Stark. But it's actually it's actually grandma's sister and that's why the DNA's shown up. This is this is Game of Thrones. This is where George R R got his inspiration. George R R is her grandfather. <gasps> that's what the RR stands for. <laughs> RJ. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me how RR stands for grandfather, really but it pretty, does. Pretty blue eyes, but the P is silent. <laughs> <laughs> she never told anyone. Uh, oh, wait. He did write my grandmother before she passed. She never told anyone about the letters and didn't write him back ever. But she did keep those letters in her safe in her room. She passed without meeting him. But I was able to meet him in early October of 2021. And he and his wife are so nice. 
almost like he got his kindness from her genetically. It was a great meeting for us. Um, so yeah, that's the story. Awesome. Wow. So she has a new uncle in her life, which is nice. But I feel like if she was really that kind and gentle that she would have like accepted the, the meeting. I mean, there's a chance there's trauma involved. Yeah, there's details that we don't know about. And that grandma took to her grave. Could be. If she locked it in a safe, that's yeah. a very you know, true. Striking we, visual. We did talk about this on a previous episode, but that is just straight up grand grandparent vibes of just having a secret and going, Yeah, I'll just never tell anybody about mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My family has a very similar story to that. Everybody's family does, where, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it. Uh my grandpa, uh I've never met him. Okay. But I have seen his Facebook. Oh boy. Like account. So we're not <laughs> friends. I don't have a Facebook. Very with the time anymore. But uh he was the product of an affair and his mother left him at a fire station. Aww. And wow. then his grandma like took him back in and raised him as her son. And he thought his whole life that his mom was his sister. Mm. It's very confusing. But he's had like so many since then. Now it's an old man, like relationships and affairs that my mom's like, I just found him. I have like another half sister that I didn't know yeah. about. And okay. Half brother that I didn't know about. And I've never met any of them. But if I do, <laughs> <laughs> right I'll us write in. it in. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> is it all through like, like how is she finding out? Is it all through like, like ancestry stuff, like the DNA tests? I, or? I don't even think it's DNA. I think it's just like, do you have other kids? And he might just be like, networking. yeah. <laughs> what one day he's like yeah facebook maybe yeah he, he's yeah. <laughs> releasing it out as like little ciphers and you have to solve it mm-hmm. i love that that's how grandparents All do the it they wait there they wait till they're old as shit and then they start dropping these like <laughs> this hot tea on you and you're just like what you huh mm-hmm. and it, it always is it's either they have like a secret family or it's like you know your uncle killed somebody when he was 15 <laughs> and it's like what <laughs> Well, we never talked like, about it, but oh, you didn't hear it from me. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> never I, speaks of it again. I, I mean, how does that come up in conversation naturally? You know, yeah, I like, guess. What's the jumping off point for like? Yeah, I had a phase where I kind of produced a lot of offspring, and then I decided not to mm-hmm. anymore. I guess, yeah. Hmm. Grandpa do be fucking. I, I, <laughs> I, I know you don't like to think about old RR Gramps over there, but he do be fucking gross. I got one more story for you guys. Amazing. Love to hear it. Are you ready for this wild title? Am I? Yes. This was sent as a screenshot to my Instagram, as one does, from a listener. To your Instagram? Or is it to the judges? Honestly, I don't remember. If you're you're soliciting actual messages to your Instagram... I mean, people do send me stories to my personal Instagram. Love that for you. I'm jealous that your brand is here's hot tea and my brand is messaging me personally on my Instagram being like, here's a poop story or here's <laughs> here's <laughs> pill. <laughs> and it's like, cool, guys. I'm so, I'm glad I made this my brand. Mm-hmm. Hey, Christian, here's a here's a three hundred dollar Honda Civic if you need another place to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is from r slash confessions. I 21 male. I'm convinced my 20 female wife, uh, wife's pet rabbit, thinks my wife is his mate. It is ruining our marriage. Oh. Oh, no. Rabbits? Hey, rabbits do be doing that. (laughs) They do be fucking like rabbits. That's where they get it from. It all started when I was dating my wife. I met her four years ago, and we've been dating all four years. (laughs) She has had the rabbit since before I met her. The little bastard is old and saggy. And partially blind. <laughs> Just fucking racking on this bunny. This, this little, sh- little fucker. What do you do besides have sex with your wife? <laughs> <laughs> Some parts of his body is missing patches of fur because he pulls it out to make a nest for himself and my wife. When we met, the rabbit oh. <laughs> was not a major issue. It would scratch and bite at me, but my wife assured me he was just nervous to have another person in her apartment, as my wife and the rabbit lived alone since my wife was 18. Uh, we have been married one year now, and the rabbit is wreaking havoc on our marriage. 
but my wife refuses to do anything because to her, the rabbit is her baby and she loves it more than anything. When I first moved in, the rabbit did not do much to me or us other than previously mentioned bites and scratches, but he shows my wife too much affection for just an owner. Uh, I think this mm-hmm. is just an insecure dude. Does Is he unaware of how pets work? Yeah. I feel like he's about to be like, the rabbit presented us with a list of 30 reasons <laughs> of, <laughs> of what we were allowed to do as a couple. Its name is Bunny Chesney. <laughs> We will be doing anything, and she will have the rabbit with her on top of her chest, on her breasts, licking them, and her face. That's not weird. Like, you're the one sexualizing that. Yeah. <laughs> she will not put it down at all when she is home with it. We eat dinner. He is there. She goes to the bathroom. He comes with. She's showering. He waits outside for her, watching her nude in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> this dude's weird. <laughs> Wife does not even let me in the bathroom with her. It's because you're fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. It has gone to the point where whenever I show my wife affection, whenever I show my wife affection, the rabbit seeks revenge on me. Sometimes not immediately, but at times he does attack me on the spot when I kiss my wife. <laughs> this <Sometimes>. little fucker's <laughs> conniving, all right? He waits days until he gets back at me. <laughs> Sometimes I find his tiny little, tiny Sometimes I find little tiny brown balls, his shit, in my closet. Another thing is that she lets the little shit roam free all day, but nighttime and when we're making love. This was not previously the case, but after an an incident during lovemaking <laughs> and much long conversations, I convinced my wife to put the rabbit in its cage when we're making love. Okay, you don't the, need to say making love eight times in the same, you know, in the same sentence. Sex There's is, other words for sex it. Sex is like a pillar, Erica. <clears throat> I need to know the incident. What happened? I know. I need an update with the incident. I was trying to lick her boobs, and the <laughs> rabbit came in and started licking her boobs. There's not room for two licks on the, each boob. But now whenever I'm making love to my wife, like clockwork... The little shit knows what we are doing and screams at the top of his lungs until my wife abandons what she's doing, a.k.a. me, even nude, and comes to the smug little shit's rescue. He's doing this out of pure spite. I am aware that rabbits only scream when very stressed or in danger, but he's in his huge cage because my wife spoils him only during the night and when we make love. I swear he's doing it to ruin our marriage. He thinks my wife is his mate and wants to get rid of me. Here's my visual. Is this guy is living through an antagonistic version of the Elijah Wood TV show where he was a dog. Oh. <laughs> but it's just a man in a rabbit suit and just like yelling. Just like in a cage just, ah, ah, every time they're having sex. Uh, he says, I have scars all over my body from bites and scratches, and my, le- and my wife refuses to do anything about it. What's she going to do? The scars are already there. Uh, the bunny I is there first. <laughs> the bunny was there first. The bunny is liable for all medical expenses. T- uh, th- th- open up a tab for the little shit. We are in couples therapy, and our marriage is very rocky. What do I do? <laughs> leave. Uh, this is <laughs> wild. Has this guy ever had a pet as a child? Yeah. For real. I mean, I had a a baby. I had a bunny when I was a little kid. Really? Yeah. And I was obsessed with the movie Fox and the Hound. So when I got the bunny, my mom says that my literal words were, you're such a little toddler, I think I'll name you Todd, which is how she names the Mm -hmm. fox. The fox's name is Todd. okay. The bunny's name is Thumper, I think. Or is that? That's Bambi. That's Bambi. That's Bambi. Anyway, so I had a bunny named Todd when I was three, and um, we kept him in a cage. Yeah. But apparently one day when I was in preschool, my dad let him out of his cage okay. and outside. Oh, no. And Erica. he ran straight into the road. And he was oh. in a, he just went straight to the fields and lived out a happy bunny life. Yeah, but they told <laughs> me he ran away. <laughs> told me he ran away. Little bunny hitchhiker. Do, do you, yeah. do you think it was because the bunny loved your mom too much and your dad was jealous? or? I just think my dad's a piece of shit. <laughs> Are you afraid that you might have gave the writer of this story ideas? Mm. You gave him a solution to his problem. Are you worried about that? 
I am now, yes, because I would hate for that to happen to this woman as it happened to me. The bunny ran like away. The cage, right. It sounds like the cage is in their house, too. Yeah. yeah. Right? If they can hear it screaming while they're making love, mm -hmm. then it has to be nearby. Mm-hmm. It's still in the bedroom. Just <laughs> it's on the bed. He's staring at the. He's forced to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Clockwork orange, his eyes woman. open. <laughs> <laughs> I, I. The thing is, uh, what's like the lifespan of a bunny? It's like ten years. I'm doing it right now. I think it's like eight to ten, but like they're they're notori notoriously Ooh. fragile. Like nine years. Nine years. Huh. You can like scream, and its heart will just stop. Oh Jesus! I'm not saying do that, but I'm just saying like respect the boundaries of your wife and then you can get a pet together afterwards but like this is just normal like uh social anxiety pet like yeah. the pet clearly has social anxiety i don't know if that's common in rabbits or bunnies but like just you could if you love your wife you'll fucking deal with it man it's a yeah. bunny yeah <laughs> it's yeah i feel like if your marriage is on the rocks i don't think a like bunny is the only issue there yeah you know yeah I mean? there's got to be some For sure deeper. Well, the, issues going on. the bunny made me cheat on her last it's, night. Oh, my God. And then the bunny. <laughs> it's probably the insecurities that, you know, are just also leaking out onto this bunny that he's probably insecure about a lot more in this relationship. Yeah. As soon as he said it lays on her nude breasts, I was like, <laughs> okay, chill. <laughs> Calm does, down. She doesn't even let me in the bathroom with her. It's like, that's, hey, you know what? If you're upset about that, that's probably why she doesn't let you in the bathroom. I want to watch you shit. Mm. You know, I just need to see what's coming out. Mm. Make sure it's landed on the Civic and the windshield wipers are working all right. Sure, 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 sure. In yeah. my in my imagined reality, this is Wilfred the TV show starring Elijah Wood as the bunny, and also their bathroom is large enough to put park a Honda Civic in it. Elijah Wood's huh. not the dog in the show Wilfred. What? He's the the owner. he's the man. Yeah. It's well, you the know Australian what? Australian guy is the thing the is dog. the thing is Wolf Elijah Wood has range and he can play both parts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, he does have range. So I've been to? saying that yeah. he could play a bunny that fucks. Yeah, if he chooses to. But <laughs> but a bunny that fucks could never do an Elijah Wood. Correct. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Is that it, Erica? That's all. I mean, I've got another story if you want it, but I think that's probably enough. For I today. think we're all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh tyler thanks for joining us thanks for coming on oh thank you so much for having me this was a true delight and an honor to be judgy uh hey likewise um do you want to go ahead and let all of our listeners know where they can find you at and sure what you got coming up in the word woodworks sure um you can follow me on tiktok at ghost honey on instagram and twitter at tyler gaysa g-a-c-a and you can listen to my podcast, Ghost Honey's Dream Machine. It's a wild ride. Go listen to it. And Erica, where can they find our stuff at? Um. Oh, my God. Tyler, and you're getting another behind the scenes look, but Erica needs this, a list of our social Otherwise, Ooh. I just ramble and I sound <laughs> stupid. We're professionals here. I can't remember all this stuff. Anyway, you can follow us at Judges Pod. That's J-U-D-G-I-E-S Pod. And you can find us on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Patreon, and Instagram. Love that for us. And Christian, throw us out of here, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, the judges love you. We're going to play the song, and I'm going to get it on beat this time. All, All right. right. It'd be really embarrassing if you didn't. Yeah. This, I. Okay. Hey, the judges love you. I was, was I a half count off? Yeah. <laughs> I should have. I did a one and e. Oh, I should have just done one and two and. You fool. Fuck! <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.